Okay, so uh, everybody, thank you very much for uh, uh, coming and uh, joining us. Uh, I would like to start the uh, open forum uh, organized by a uh, Japanese government and the French government uh, uh, jointly. Uh, and uh, uh, I, uh, my name is Yoichi Ida, uh, the Deputy Director General for G7 and G20 relations uh, from the Ministry of Internal Affairs and the Communications of the Japanese government. Uh, I uh, would uh, really uh, appreciate uh, your uh, uh, participation in the discussion. Uh, some of you, I guess, uh, some of you uh, saw the, the uh, title of the op this uh, session as uh, 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 the uh, envisaging uh, the pillars uh, of G20 uh, digital economy discussion next year under Japanese presidency. That was the original thought. But then uh, we discussed with a French colleague uh, that uh, we want to talk about the uh, synergy between G7 and G20 frameworks because uh, we will be the next presidency uh, of G20 framework, but uh, French, uh, France is uh, the next uh, uh, presidency for G7 framework. So we wanted to uh, I, I wanted to discuss how to uh, strengthen the synergy between two different uh, frameworks. But uh, after that, we, after we started the discussion, uh, I uh, received a proposal, a very good proposal from a French colleague that uh, we want to discuss how to strengthen the multi-stakeholder uh, process in the frameworks of G7 and G20. It's really suitable and very appropriate uh, to discuss, uh, especially in, in the, on the occasion of IGF. So uh, I was very happy to, to change the title of the session. So please uh, uh, be aware that the, the, the discussion uh, from now on will be uh, discussing how to strengthen or how to make the best use of multi-stakeholder approach in the governmental forum such as G7 and G20. So uh, in the beginning, uh, let me introduce uh, uh, some uh, information about uh, the plan uh, of G20 next year and our presidency. Uh, actually, uh, uh, we, have, uh, we have just started our uh, preparation because uh, we are still under uh, the presidency of Argentina this year, and uh, uh, we are now uh, uh, considering how to succeed the, the achievement uh, made by the Argentina presidency. But uh, we understand uh, even uh, in the previous years uh, in G20 uh, framework, uh, the presidencies, previous presidencies uh, paid a lot of attention to, to multi-stakeholder uh, uh, participation and we want to strengthen uh, the, 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 that uh, uh, the, uh, intention uh, in, under our presidency too. Now we, we are planning to have our uh, ministerial, <coughs> sorry, digital uh, related ministerial as trade and the digital economy ministers meeting. Uh, that is uh, why we believe Trade and the digital economy are two pillars uh, for the growth of uh, global economy, and we want to, to create some synergy to, to hold two different uh, ministerials together jointly. And uh, this ministerial will be held uh, on 8th and 9th of June next year. So we will have only half a year and so and we need to, to rush uh, the preparation. So we will have intensive discussion with uh, different stakeholders and we would ask for your strong support. And uh, we, uh, we are just uh, uh, elaborating our agenda and we have our, uh, only skeleton of the agenda at the moment at hand, but uh, I am uh, more, uh, quite certain that we will uh, have a uh, one overarching uh, topic uh, as how to contribute uh, to the uh, inclusive and sustainable development uh, of the global economy through digitalization of the society. That will be the overarching theme of our uh, G20 discussion and uh, to realize that uh, ultimate goal we would 
we will discuss uh, different elements under this overarching topic. And these elements will include uh, accessibility or uh, digital divide in different uh, areas, and including uh, a digital divide in infrastructure, and also one of the main pillars will be artificial intelligence, uh, which will be uh, the very uh, fundamental uh, foundation for the digi uh, digital economy in, in the near future. And we, if we discuss uh, artificial intelligence, we, I believe we need to discuss uh, free flow of information to support the sound development of artificial intelligence and we also need to discuss cyber security. So those uh, elements will be the main pillars of our uh, discussion next year, and uh, uh, all, all through the discussions over all the elements, uh, I believe multi-stakeholder approach will be very important. So today, uh, I would like to ask uh, the speakers from the previous presidencies and also from the engagement groups uh, to discuss uh, how they uh, made uh, efforts to utilize multi-stakeholders' uh, uh, powers uh, in their dis preparation, and also how, uh, how they found the difficulties uh, in their efforts in previous years. Then uh, I would like to, to make the best use of those uh, found findings and uh, learnings uh, in our preparation next year. So thank you very much, and uh, let me invite the uh, French colleague as the next uh, presidency uh, as the, of G7, uh, the Ambassador uh, Andy. Uh, please make uh, some comments uh, from the... Yes. Good morning, sorry. So I'm, the, I'm Henri Verdier, I'm the new, I will be tomorrow the new ambassador for digital, <laughs> for digital for France. I'm very happy to be with you today, uh, but I won't share the complete agenda because uh, I will start tomorrow. But as you, it's obvious that for us, for France, for you, for, for everyone, digital revolution with opportunities and threats are very important topics, so will be a very important part of the work of the G7. And um, as you heard the President Macron uh, Monday, you, for us it's very important to face the new challenges in a very multi-stakeholder process. So we will try to work a lot with uh, civil society, with companies, and we are very happy to see that we will have a strong partnership with Japan and uh, between uh, G7 and G20. Sorry for my English. I will improve my English. Um, and I'm sure that the French presidency will ask us uh, to, to have some concrete results because um, we believe, we strongly believe in the multi-stakeholder way but uh, internet is a, it's a, a common for the humanity, but we need to prove that th this process um, works and we have real threats and real issues to face, um, as you know, about, uh, and, and new, new real problems about et ethics, about uh, global governance, about, about cyber criminality, about digital divide. So we will try to, to build <laughs> A way to, to, to have concrete results, and uh, and that's that's probably my main main mission. Is the first thing they told me <laughs> when they asked me to be the next ambassador. So that's just my uh, opening remarks because I will really start tomorrow, and today I, I have to, to hear and to learn. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Uh, it's a great honor for us to, to have him uh, and as his first uh, job as a cyber ambassador. <laughs> so let me introduce the speakers from the previous uh, presidencies of G7 and G20. Uh, on the, uh, from myself on the right side at the end, uh, uh, Mr. Samuel, uh, how to pronounce, I'm, I'm sorry. Samuel Marlou Ouellet. 
Okay, from the uh, Canadian Industry uh, uh, Ministry of Industry and uh, Economic Development, and the Canada is the uh, presidency of G7 this year. And the, on the uh, left side uh, of Samuel, uh, uh, the Dr. Uh, Daniela Brunstrup uh, from the German Ministry of uh, Economy and uh, Economic Affairs and Energy. And uh, Germany was uh, the uh, presidency of G20 last year. And on my right side, uh, Ms., uh, Madame Lita uh, Fossil, uh, from Italian uh, Ministry of Economic uh, Development. And uh, next to uh, Ambassador, uh, we have also uh, Madam, uh, Dr. Uh, Valeria Esculia uh, from Argentina uh, Ministry of Modernization. And Argentina is the uh, presidency of uh, G20 next year, mm -hmm. uh, this year. So let me uh, start with maybe Daniela uh, to uh, make some comments on how you tried to make uh, uh, use of multi-stakeholder approach in your preparation for G20 when you were in the presidency and also uh, in what, which part you found the most difficulties. Thank you very much, and um, thank you very much to the French and Japanese gov governments um, for organizing this forum, because uh, let me say first of all that I think it's very important to interlink better IGF and the G formats. So um, thank you very much. That's a very good idea to do that, because indeed both formats are, are multi-stakeholder driven in a way, even though the G formats, of course, are governmental forums. Nevertheless, we tried in our G20 presidency last year to work very closely together with uh, other multi-stakeholder groups. You know that in the G formats, it's um, established that we have different uh, multi-stakeholder groups as, for example, Business 20, so B20, or Women 20, the W20, the Youth 20, the Science 20. And we worked very closely together from the very beginning of the preparation process with those groups. And that ended, uh, as you maybe know, on uh, high-level meetings. The Chancellor herself um, was very much involved in the processes and met on high level with those groups um, to uh, let them influence the G20 discussions. Um, we found that very fruitful because um, we got input let's say for our roadmap. You mentioned that we had for the first time the G20 Digital Ministers meeting and what came out of the process was the G20 roadmap on digital issues. And um, a lot of those issues addressed there came also out of the multi-stakeholder process. Um, let me just highlight two issues because you will follow up on them and, and the Argentinian presidency did after us and we are very honored and grateful for that. Um, one thing is, interconnectivity and connecting all people by 2025. So in enhancing infrastructure is a very important point, I think. Um, a second one is bridging the digital divide, the gender divide also, but not only that divide, but the divide we face for a lot of groups. So there are two points just to raise them. You ask for difficulties. Um, yes, indeed, for us, there was one difficulty, and that was how to um, sequence the things because you know all those multi-stakeholder groups they also uh, work together and have um, their negotiations of papers and um, in, in a way they work in parallel with the G20 or G7 process so even though from the very beginning we tried to work together with them and we had a lot of meetings with them it was sometimes difficult to get the two processes together um, let me give you one example that was uh, B20. B20 came up with um, the issue of artificial intelligence, r in our view, rather late in their process, and we couldn't integrate that in, in the G20 process uh, at that point in time. And what we then did was that we had another task force meeting, so on working level, after the ministerial, and then we invited the B20 to give the, the input they had worked out then into the task force and hand over to the Argentinian presidency after us. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Daniela. Yeah, I still remember uh, you had the uh, uh, 
a, a kind of intensive uh, week uh, uh, w w uh, planned uh, with the uh, industry uh, in the middle of March, or, uh, one, one month before the ministerial, and uh, uh, it was uh, uh, it was very impressive to see. You know, you are inviting not only the business uh, groups but also the, some groups from consumer uh, 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 people. If I may add that, thanks that you <laughs> remind me. We, ha we had a multi-stakeholder con. In fact, we had several multi-stakeholder conferences before our ministerial. So directly before the ministerial, we had one multi-stakeholder conference in Düsseldorf where the ministerial took place. But before that, we had, for example, a consumer summit also. So we had different formats with the multi-stakeholder groups before uh, our ministerial, before the summit. And that influenced, of course, the, the, the process. Yeah. And in fact, we built upon your experience as the seventh presidency, because you also had that multi-stakeholder format before the ministry, and we found that very fruitful, and that's why we did that as well. Okay, thank you very much for your comment. Actually, uh, as Daniela said, uh, Japanese government had the uh, G7 uh, ministerial uh, uh, in 2060, and uh, uh, we, yeah, we maybe experimentally uh, did a, a multi-stakeholder uh, meeting uh, one day before the ministerial. So it was good to see uh, uh, different stakeholders gathered and uh, discussed uh, the same topics uh, as ministers discussed. But uh, the meeting uh, on the previous day uh, didn't produce a lot because you know it, it was too late to make an in, uh, substantial input into the uh, ministerial discussion. So I, I think, uh, and uh, and also we invited some people from business side, but we didn't uh, think about uh, consumer side or other groups. So it's always uh, uh, you know uh, uh, there are always new findings for the government. You know uh, when we try uh, challenge new things. So thank you very much, Daniela. And so uh, let me invite maybe Samuel. Of course, uh, thank you very much, uh, Yuichi. It's a, it's a pleasure to, to support you in, the, in your next uh, G20 presidency. And it's also a pleasure to, to work with France to ensure that the, the transition uh, happened well from the Canada G7 presidency to, to France G7 presidency. Uh, so along this year, and, and we're not done, and I flag that uh, we still have to organize a, a multi-stakeholder event in, a, in, in just a few weeks in Montreal. So from the broad picture, uh, of course, we consulted uh, at the G7 level the similar group that, that you just mentioned. So like for B7, we consulted the Canadian Chamber of Commerce along 2018. Uh, on labor, we consulted the Canadian Labor Congress. Uh, for the youth, we engage with the World Economic Forum, the Global Shapers. Uh, on science, we uh, consulted the Royal Society of, of Canada. Uh, and to that list, you had many civil society uh, stakeholders and, and think tanks. Uh, and we also, uh, Canada, added, added a strong emphasis to consultation with women uh, and also created, uh, in addition to these traditional uh, G7 group, uh, Canada created a gender equality advisory council to support uh, gender as a cross-cutting teams uh, along Canada's presidency. Uh, and this gender equality council is still composed of global uh, multidisciplinary experts, uh, and they demonstrated their commitment to advance uh, gender equality, uh, and they helped Canada to shape the, the public uh, discussion on, on gender. So it's a uh, uh, the current government is in Canada is uh, quite committed into uh, um, like progress of uh, gender balance. Uh, so through these consultation, uh, each of our ministerial meetings, uh, including the leader summit in uh, in Charlevoix, uh, was quite informed with uh, gender balance commitment. So my team uh, also supported the preparation of the G7 uh, called uh, Preparing for the Job of the Future Ministerial Meeting in, uh, in March, uh, which happened in Montreal. And we also conducted targeted consultation uh, for this ministerial. Um, so what we did is prior to uh, the ministerial, we uh, produced a digital consultation paper 
uh, and we share that with women and indigenous stakeholder across Canada and using probably the G7 uh, website. Uh, we also organize conference call with organization uh, in total, uh, like tw t 23 women's organization, three national indigenous uh, organization, uh, and some of them also were speakers during the, the multi-stakeholder conference. So we had a round table uh, with business uh, and we also invited a lot of, of stakeholders at the conference. I think it's up to 11 speakers uh, from around the world who uh, took part into the ministerial. So it was a good way to represent a diversity of point of views during the, during the, the conference. Uh, and as I've, I mentioned, uh, it, it's, it's not done. We, in three weeks, will organize in Montreal a G7 multi-stakeholder conference on AI. Uh, with the objective to uh, discuss how to enable the responsible uh, use of, of AI and adoption through uh, like all the stakeholders from the government perspective, private sector perspective, uh, civil society, uh, and of course the academic and research community. Uh, and like the panel members, moderator and participant are carefully selected in, in collaboration with our G7 partners to ensure that all these groups, so industry, government, civil society, and, and, and research will be equally represented uh, as participant and also as uh, a speaker. Um, before I mention like the, the difficulties or, or the challenge, uh, I, I did uh, note that you mentioned that you want to continue to, to work on AI, so it's gonna be a pleasure to share uh, some of the, the, the output uh, at the conference with, uh, with Japan, and we encourage uh, Japan to continue to, uh, to discuss AI during your uh, G G20 presidency, so it's, we think it's a really good thing that you continue to, to work in this field. Um, and about your question on what was the most difficult th doing all these multi-stakeholder con consultation, I want to flag two things. Uh, it's, first one is, it's demanding. You need to invest time, and you need a, a team. It's, it's not easy to, to prepare the documents with the G7 countries is one thing, but when on the top of that you add all these consultations with this long list, you need a structure, you need a team, uh, so you have to plan that well, well ahead of time. If you do that, it's feasible, but if you don't plan like the, the, to build the capacity to do that, it's at some point quite demanding. The, the second thing I would recommend uh, Japan and France to, to take in, uh, in mind when working on a progress, it's to make sure not to over consult. Because along the year, you have all these ministerials, you have the leader summit, uh, many groups, for example, when we engage with women, they will be engaged on many topics. So it's important that when you, for a specific consultation, when you engage with a group, don't assume that they know what you want to receive as, as input. So be clear with the groups to communicate we're gonna hold a round table, we want to receive views on that and that, so to be very specific, and also to explain what's in for them, so what's the benefit, what is the opportunity for them to influence the debate. So if you're able to uh, better explain expectation and opportunities, it's, it's a good way to obtain their, their attention. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Samuel. Uh, yes, I, I remember the Canadian uh, government set um, uh, overall, what to say, one consistent uh, topic of gender equality all through the different ministerials and as well as the leader summit. And uh, uh, you uh, raised uh, uh, the, this topic uh, as one of the most important outcomes from the discussion. It was very impressive and uh, I, didn't uh, know uh, how to realize uh, such a, a complicated work, but uh, thank you very much for your sharing the, the key to the success and secret of the success <laughs> in this uh, discussion now. And also I remember uh, in your innovation minister's meeting, uh, you uh, uh, created one session uh, attended by private uh, entrepreneurs and uh, as far as I remembered, uh, it was first time to have private people not only to report uh, their uh, discussion uh, in their own fora, 
uh, to the ministerial, but uh, directly discuss uh, in, in, in the uh, ministerial meeting. I, I think it was the first uh, uh, challenge. And uh, how uh, did you think uh, about uh, this? And how, uh, wh what was the evaluation after you? Thank you, Yuichi. Um, again, to, to ensure that you give like visibility and possibility to influence the debate to, to many groups will put the country maybe in a position that you don't control perfectly the discussion. So it, it could be a risk from our civil servant uh, typical perspective. However, uh, it's also a way to be proactive and to uh, not, be, not to be surprised by, by their comments. So when, if, if you consult well in advance, uh, you're not surprised and you're also able to, to provide some answer uh, like along a ministerial and to influence the, the discussion even at the, um, at the minister level if you start ahead of time and before to invite these non-traditional stakeholders at, at the table. Okay, thank you very much. So, uh, thank you, Sam. Uh, next, uh, let me invite uh, Valeria uh, to, to talk about uh, your experience. Good afternoon, everyone. Well, first of all, thank you for, in, for inviting us to, to share our experience. Um, well, for us, it was also very important to integrate this multi-stakeholder approach, and, and we were also aware of the, of the difficulties that it, it entails, but we took the challenge. And what we did was, at the moment zero, when we were uh, working on our proposal as a, a I, as an Argentinian presidency, the first thing was to, to meet with all the stakeholders, with all the engagement groups. And so we, we, we met, we listened to them, we listened to, to our agenda, their interests, and we tried to look for meeting points and possible synergies. Then we, had, uh, we have our first working meeting, and by the time we had our first working meeting, we have already had a first round of consultation, meaning that somehow we, we could incorporate these other voices into our proposal. Uh, and then we share, of course, the proposal with uh, the G20 delegations. By the second working meeting, what we did was to, we did two things. The first one was to, to ask all the uh, engagement group, groups to write uh, two pagers so we will share it in advance with our delegation, so as a, as a background material. And we also invite them to our second working meeting as a speakers. And there was one group uh, with experience proved to be more effective that we could also organize a back-to-back -back meeting. Uh, that was with the B20. We organized the B20 G20 Digital Economy Summit and that was one day before our working meeting. And during this summit, this summit has uh, had two parts. In the morning, speakers from the B20 and the G20, uh, it was open to the community, so everybody could attend. It was free and, o it was a free and open event. Um, and in the afternoon, it was a workshop with a structured discussions between B20 and G20 and the panelists at each session has a panelist of uh, both sides. And then we collect all the outcomes of this workshop and we prepare another background document for our internal discussions. Um, we also try to, in this, multi, in this integration of the multi-stakeholder approach, we also uh, try to coordinate as much as possible with other working groups w within the G20 because there are meeting points in the agendas. A good example is uh, the future of work that entails digital, education, and employment. So what we did was uh, we organized a workshop with employment and the education group. And in this, from this workshop, participate delegates uh, from our task force and for these uh, working groups trying to uh, build uh, a common vision of the future of work. In parallel, the uh, finance track was working on a menu of policy options 
to address the challenges and opportunities of the future of work and they, they made a round-off internal consultation with all the working groups. Uh, another way of integrating this multi-stakeholder approach was uh, in, a, in our deliverables. We, uh, picking up of the, on, a, on the German's roadmap for digitalization, we came up with uh, five deliverables. We want them to be actionable, useful, and also open to the public. Uh, actually, you can find them online. Uh, the deliverables were a high-level principles for digital government. Um, then uh, nine high-level policy recommendations for breaching the digital gender divide, and these recommendations came up from a round of consultations with the G20 countries. We, we, we asked them, what are you doing in your country? Which are the initiatives and policy actions that you are taking to breach the digital gender divide? Send them to me. We, we made a report, and from this report, we synthesized these nine high-level recommendations. We also did a similar process for measurement the digital economy. We developed the G20 toolkit for measuring the digital economy that gathers all the indicators, methodological approach, and also identifies the measurement gaps in measuring the digital economy. And it has a section with uh, initiatives conducted by G20 countries to address the measurement issue. And, and also taking in uh, the infrastructure, we also develop uh, high-level recommendations for accelerating the deployment of infrastructure. And finally, and what I think is uh, the most interesting deliverable, is we are launching in, in the Leader Summit the G20 repository of digital policies. And in, in a first moment, it will be fed with policy actions conducted by governments, but hopefully in a second stage uh, it, it will be open to the private sector and the civil society so everybody can upload. It's, a, it's an open code platform so people can uh, upload the policy actions and initiatives that first will be public, but hopefully in a second stage will be pr uh, not only public to share this experience and to learn from to learn from each other. So this is how we try to integrate the multi-stakeholder approach from the Argentinian presidency at the Task Force of Digital Economy. But uh, now that the process is almost finished, uh, I couldn't agree more with what Daniela says, and the challenge was sequence. It's a very short, the, the, times, the time constraints are huge, it's, uh, there are many agendas, many events going on. You have to coordinate with in internally and externally. And the sequence of work, it's, uh, it's very hard. Sometimes it's hard to integrate. So as a final reflection, I will say that we should uh, look for innovative ways of bringing more, more voices to the table. But bringing that voices to the table is not enough to translate them into a concrete outcome. So we have to, there is room for improvement, um, but I think that we are in the, in the right track because we are learning from, from presidency to, to presidency, and um, that's all. Okay, thank you, Varelia. Uh, as uh, uh, you mentioned, it's always uh, difficult, even for the government, to succeed the previous work uh, to the next uh, presidency. And, uh, uh, we will be very careful to uh, in doing so uh, next year, and but uh, it it will be even more difficult to to succeed or to maintain the the continuity uh, in the discussion uh, with different stakeholders. So, so uh, from that sense, uh, we want to uh, always uh, want to listen to uh, multi stakeholders. Thank you. So, uh, sorry to keep you waiting, uh, Lita. Uh, just. Uh, 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 briefly, may, may please. 
Thank you. Thank you for inviting me and uh, as a representative of Italian government uh, to this uh, useful uh, idea and the meeting because the preparation is a very important moment. Uh, I'd like just to uh, provide some <coughs> information, practical information about um, our uh, event uh, that we uh, established last year in the framework of the G7 meeting. And uh, because uh, our ministry mm, uh, organized a uh, particular thematic uh, meeting, additional meeting, um, on the title uh, Making the Next Production Revolution Inclusive, Open, Secure. And in this occasion, uh, the Italian Minister of Economic Development organized a, a multi stakeholder conference. And uh, I would like to read some of the <laughs> practical information, just not forget uh, anything. Uh, and uh, the conference demo was the same of uh, one of the G7, as I said, the, the making the digital economy and society inclusive, open, secure. And the venue of the conference was the same of the G7 meeting, um, the Veneria um, Royal Palace in Turin. And uh, the discussion was opened uh, by the Secretary of State for Telecom uh, and introduced by uh, the Commissioner for the Digital Agenda, who was operating uh, within uh, uh, the Prime Minister's office. Uh, also by Joram Marby, CEO of ICANN, and uh, by Andrew Wyckoff, uh, Director for Science, and Technology, and Innovation of OECD. Uh, the conference was then divided into two, four consecutive sessions, uh, each with a, a different moderator, a professional journalist, and uh, each session had a keynote speech, a panel from four to five people, and a question answer space. Uh, the sessions were SMEs and the digital revolution, uh, datification, free flow of information, and sustainable growth. Uh, securing the cyberspace for business uh, and uh, towards a beneficial uh, artificial intelligence in digital society. Uh, each session was organized by a scientific coordinator uh, identified uh, by the Minister of Economic Development, uh, some professor from uh, academia and the Polytechnic of Milano and uh, from Rome, uh, University of Sapienza and so on. Uh, scientific coordinators selected uh, the speakers, uh, ensuring a fair balance of G7 nationalities, and uh, welcoming the proposal made by the member countries. Uh, the final wrap-up uh, session saw the arrival of the ministers. They listened to the conclusions of the four uh, scientific coordinators, and uh, from uh, the, also Diego Piacentini. Uh, uh, Diego was the chair of the 17 groups uh, of uh, particular session was uh, um, organized just to, to deepen some other arguments and they gave final remarks uh, moderated by the, the deputy editor of the daily La Stampa a newspaper in, uh, in Italy. Uh, on the financial front, <laughs> costs were entirely uh, borne by the Italian government to the Trade Promotion Agency. Uh, it took charge of the travel and accommodation cost of our speaker in addition to the rooms, rent and catering costs. So these uh, are practical, very practical information. Uh, no particular problems, no particular difficulties, uh, uh, and uh, uh, I can say that it was a very successful event. Uh, now I can add uh, just a little bit uh, some uh, idea about uh, the principal topics underlined by, uh, our, uh, by our government. Uh, so the Italian government has set uh, the national priorities in the development of the emerging technologies, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, blockchain, and Internet of Things. And uh, for the artificial in the, uh, about the artificial intelligence, we'd like to deepen uh, our knowledge on the matter. And uh, Italy, for this reason, uh, is establishing a group of experts 
who will draft the national strategy on uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, the aim is that of developing policies and tools in the various themes related to the development and the adoption of the artificial intelligence. <laughs> Uh, Italy also gives a, a, a lot of importance, at most attention, to the blockchain technology. And I uh, would like to, the main aim of the partnership is a cooperation, the partnership also in uh, Europe at European level, uh, is cooperation between member states to exchange best practices and skills. And I uh, would like to also to uh, highlight the need of uh, regular routine frames. This is, these are the topics uh, that uh, are now uh, at, uh, on, on the table, and uh, we would like to contribute <laughs> to the organization of uh, the event of the next year. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we Thank you very much. Uh, we recognize uh, uh, finance is always uh, uh, one of the difficulties when we uh, try to, to promote a multi-stakeholder approach. So I'm very uh, sorry to keep uh, the speakers from the private sector waiting for a long time, but uh, I, I assume I have, uh, we have uh, 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 Miss uh, Natasha, uh, very difficult to pronounce, Cuesta Semeon from uh, uh, double 20, and also uh, uh, Mr. or Miss uh, Nema, Nena Na, Na, Wakanma. Okay, um, thank you very much. So, uh, please take the floor and please uh, uh, explain you. Uh, maybe I, I would ask uh, to talk about to your experience and also your uh, maybe uh, request or wish uh, to the government. Uh, uh, how uh, you would think uh, 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 easier to to promote a, a multi-stakeholder approach? So, please take the floor. Okay. Um, so Natasha Kester Semeon and myself represent the association Jamais Sans Elle, uh, which means never without them. Uh, a woman, feminine plural. Uh, uh, it was founded in January 2016 by a small network of actors, mostly in digital economy, uh, including Henri Verdier, uh, actually. Um, and it quickly developed into a very active movement, expanding originally through uh, the social media with the hashtag Jamais Sans Elle. And Natasha is actually the spokesperson of the association. And so the only reason why I'm speaking instead of her uh, is because she's not so fluent in English. So since the time is short, <laughs> I will try to convey the message. So in just one word, Jamais Sans Elle is promoting gender diversity and women inclusion in all sectors of society, originally through a very simple action, which does not require any special policy and can be applied any, uh, by anyone immediately. By signing the Jamais Sans Elle pledge, I commit my, myself to never participate to any panel, conference, or expert committee of any sort if there are no women, and I let it know. Um, so it's pretty straightforward, but it proved remarkably efficient in uh, requiring from the organizers of events and committees uh, that they indeed pay attention to gender balance. And as a matter of fact, many prominent stakeholders uh, in the digital world and beyond have adopted the Jamais Sans Elle pledge and promoted it in their environment with very concrete and enduring effects. So the action of Jamais Sans Elle are not uh, limited to women participation and visibility. They also focus on women access to key leading position and in all types of environment. Um, the, the, I should say that the movement reached also the political world with many deputies and senators uh, joining in and also the, the, the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs in France and the Minister himself, uh, Jean-Yves Le Drian, and the Minister for European Affairs, Nathalie Loiseau, also uh, signed them from themselves and, and sent a call to all French ambassadors and consuls around the world to, to commit themselves. And also in, in, um, in, in Germany, actually, the. The German Minister of State for Europe, uh, Michael Roth, now became a very active member and promoter of the movement. Anyway, we are here today because we have been actively participating to the Women 20 process in preparation of the G20 summit in Buenos Aires in two weeks from now, actually. Um, we actually we were uh, invited by the Argentinian leaders of this engagement group to work along with 100 delegates from the G20 uh, countries with very different profiles. 
So this has been multi-stakes holderism in practice uh, for several months and it led to a series of recommendations finalized during the W20 summit in Buenos Aires last month where Natasha and myself were the head of delegation for France. Uh, the main thing we learned from the process is that the multi-stakeholder approach is absolutely crucial when it comes to addressing issues in somewhat disruptive domains such as digital economy disruptive in the sense that they interact with traditional organization of the society, whether of the work or of the relation between people, in a way that offers remarkable opportunities, but also carries some threats and possibilities of imbalance and potentially uh, 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 leaving people along the way. This is the case for various issues regarding digital inclusion, but uh, the question of women inclusion in general also impacts the organization of relations with the society. And as it turns out, the, the two are not unrelated, of course. So, uh, indeed, digital economy can be a very powerful tool of empowerment through digital entrepreneurship, obviously, but also by giving access to much larger areas of activities and providing opportunities for visibility, influence, and, and participation of individuals. But because this new horizon can open in many different ways, at different paces in different contexts and lead to different types of back reaction and side effects, positive or negative, the multi-stakeholder approach is absolutely crucial. And uh, what we personally learned from this experience is that it can be indeed very efficient. So a first message regarding multi-stakeholderism uh, is that what is actually needed is not representativeness per se, uh, but most of all expertise. And no one has universal expertise. Uh, so, uh, because digital economy is so pervasive, it's bound to raise problems in all sorts of areas and require expertise that may not have been anticipated in, in the first place. So, an interesting example is the way artificial intelligence suddenly proved to develop very strong gender biases in different contexts. Um, so, you don't want everyone on board to be able to say, look, we are great, we, we are very inclusive. You want on board all the people who can actually contribute and show other participants what they would not have seen or been able to think about uh, by themselves. And therefore, you need to include different types of uh, stakeholders. In the case of uh, W20, the Women 20, the delegates do not only come from uh, countries with different uh, situations uh, and traditions regarding situation of women, whether in Canada, Japan, India, Argentina, or Saudi Arabia. Uh, they also have different profiles and backgrounds, civil society, rural areas, uh, women rights fighters, entrepreneurs, local associations, NGOs. Anyway, to come back to the process itself, it developed through a series of online meetings with webinars, sharing of experience, exchange of documents and information. And it was organized into four distinct areas with some links, of course. So work inclusion, financial inclusion, digital inclusion. And this year, the Argentinian uh, leadership uh, uh, wished to have a special focus on women in uh, rural areas, uh, which indeed proved very meaningful, actually. Each of these components had a physical meeting in the form of a workshop during the year, uh, each in a different country. Uh, in the case of digital inclusion, it was uh, in Paris, actually. Uh, and finally, 65 delegates from the, the, the 20 countries were able to meet in person for the summit in, in Buenos Aires, the, 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 the Women's Summit, uh, W20 Summit, last month, beginning of last month, where the official communique was finalized and approved with 15 recommendations, three of which actually focus on digital inclusion. This was again an interesting experience regarding multi stakeholderism in general. Writing an official community is of course, never an easy task because at the end of the day, you have to come up with actual sentences uh, that everybody agrees on. But in the case of G20 and, or G7 engagement groups, this is not a political or diplomatic issue. I mean, this is left for the, the actual summit between the heads of, state, of states. Uh, it's more about finding proper formulations for recommendations that should not only suit everyone, but be efficient globally. Uh, this is the key point, and uh, being efficient means uh, making sense in all sorts of environments and also not risking to meet any showstopper that would not have been thought of if one did not have the complete uh, perspective. But this requires true interaction over time, 
to better know each other's problematic and gain wider uh, knowledge and expertise to be including in our own views and preoccupation. So this is another important message. We need time to be efficient and we need to build a community. Uh, the Argentinian women who led the, the, the W20 this year are making a lot of efforts in this direction so that we keep the ball running and turn this intense activity that took place uh, on this occasion into a longer term process supported by efficient and uh, proactive community. Um, so for this we need appropriate tools. We need a platform, notably a digital platform, suitable framework and also fluid uh, reactive framework, neither too much organized or too diffuse, and financial resources as well. Uh, the various states and governments should not supervise the work and interaction of the stakeholder, but they should provide minimum resources to ensure that these works and interactions indeed occur, grow, and lead to concrete, concrete uh, results. The example of the W20 community can be a very good starting point, but there is the question of continuity from one year to the next, as you were mentioning. In the case of W20, some heritage is transmitted since the creation of the W20 uh, during the Turkish presidency. And actually next week uh, in Tokyo, there will be a meeting at the uh, Argentinian embassy for the W20 Argentina handover and the W20 Japan kickoff. Uh, but dedicated resources to keep the momentum are definitely needed. Uh, I think it's also the responsibility of G7 and G20 countries and governments to ensure this continuity at the level of the engagement groups. Remember in particular that the various stakeholders and delegates have been working solely on their own resources so far, and we all know that the limits of that. And uh, in addition, this creates a bias uh, and uh, some imbalance between different types of stakeholders, uh, depending on the resources that they can, they can deploy on short term or long term. So this is, of course, detrimental to the very idea of multi-stakeholderism, right? So finally, coming back to digital issues, uh, Jamais Sans Elle, our association, has several ideas and su subjects to push forward, of course, but this is not the place to discuss them. From the general point of view, we believe that a, a gender balance a perspective should be adopted everywhere, and gender diversity should be ensured at all levels of reflection, decision, and actions. Um, so this view is, of, of course, uh, shared by uh, more and more people, including in digital ecosystem. A few months ago, we, we developed a, 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 a charter together with Mi Microsoft uh, France, which is very proactive in this direction. Also, last Monday at this very forum, we announced a pledge uh, aimed at internet governance, uh, governance organizations and think tanks, which has been signed by uh, the Internet Society France, Reporter Without Borders, and the think tank uh, Renaissance Numérique. So this is a part of multi-stakeholderism in the sense that actions and commitments can indeed emerge from the civil society and economical actors and generate experience that can then be shared, transplanted, and adapted uh, everywhere. Another important example is, of course, education, which is key to digital economy, and uh, innovative digital schools have recently attracted a lot of attention in France. I won't go into details. But to finish, let's keep in mind that all these efforts make sense only in view um, of a more ethical, more pacified, equitable, and more inclusive world. The technology is what it is, but the digital revolution must be humanist, and as we strongly believe in uh, the association Jamais Sans Elle, feminism is a humanism. So, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, uh, finally, um, um, yes, please, take the way. Thank you very much. I'm well aware of our time, and some people may be hungry at this time. I will say three things. I will talk about the how, the what, and the why. Under the how, I will speak about three things. Under the what, two things. And there is only one why. Okay. My name is Nenna. I'm the policy director of the World Wide Web Foundation. So how did we work? Um, as civil society, we work with other organizations. Um, I think ISOC is here and Mozilla. We did work as a group to bring out an open letter that we submitted. So how did we do that? 
we use the web. That's what we have generally. So we work virtually, we held meetings, and um, we drafted uh, simultaneously online. We did not have all the means to have face-to-face -face meetings, so we use the World Wide Web a lot. We focused our efforts on the digital agenda. Um, the G20 is big, and we can't have all the engagement all the time, so we, what we did was to focus our efforts, which is shown in the letter, and then uh, we pool resources. We can't be everywhere all the time. So where it is better for Mozilla to be present, Mozilla will be present. Where ISOC speaks better, ISOC will be present. And for W20, the Web Foundation was physically present. So the three things we did in the how is use the web, focus our efforts. Uh, basically, now we want to do more uh, with the French uh, digital uh, part and we pull our resources. So what exactly is our input? Uh, the letter is on G20, as you write G20, openletter.org. Uh, that's the main message I came here to give, G20.org. And what are we asking for? Meaningful access is one of those. Privacy and data protection of our rights freedom of expression, cybersecurity, and increased and level field competition. Um, once again, uh, it is very important that we put these on the table, not just for this year, but for the next years coming, and as France takes over G7 as well, because we don't want to dissociate G7 from G20. We want to be on your back and in your face at the same time. Um, the second thing is that last Monday, uh, the second what? The first what is the G20 letter itself, g20openletter.org. The second thing is contractfortheweb.org, contractfortheweb.org, which Tim Berners-Lee launched last Monday, and the French have signed up to this, giving us key principles towards a digital economy that is respectful of human rights and all of the above that we have asked for. So those are the, our two words, the letter and the contract. Why are we doing this with other people, uh, engaging other civil society, coming to you, being in your face, being at your back, mailing you, pinging you on, on Twitter? Why are we doing this? Because we believe, and this is the why, citizens and consumers have a right to be placed at the center of decisions around the digital economy. It is our right. So we want to be at the center, we want to be in your front, we want to be behind you because it's our right. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, we are uh, almost exhausting uh, time, but uh, uh, let me uh, ask, uh, invite uh, uh, ICC to make short comment. And uh, I wanted to take one or two uh, questions from the floor, but uh, uh, just after her, uh, if we have uh, one, one minute or so, so please. Thank you very much. My name is Elizabeth thomas Reno, and I'm with the International Chamber of Commerce. Um, I will be brief. I appreciate that uh, we're running late. I think there are a lot of things that are um, easy to pick up on from what has been said, so I'll, I'll highlight some of those. First and foremost, I want to thank the organizers for having this discussion. I think it reflects very well that you're um, considering this so much that you're sharing with each other about what you're learning in each process. And I can tell you that those of us on the stakeholder side, we're learning lots as well. And, and um, so being able to have a bit of an exchange about that is very useful. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with the International Chamber of Commerce, just very briefly, it's the World Business Organization. It has an interaction with a lot of UN agencies. We're an official observer to the UN. And we, look, we work internationally, and the reason I want you to know that is because we also have presence in 100 countries, and our policies reflect cooperation from that input across a, a, a much wider breadth of countries than just our interaction on uh, G20 or, or other specific activities. But the other reason I want to mention that is that I think one of the things we've heard about and one of the things I would stress is that global and local activities need to reinforce one another. 
Uh, what we find is that in some countries you have really strong and robust multi-stakeholder uh, policy engagement activities, and sometimes you don't. And when you miss those, there are other ways in which we are trying to make sure that we get that very clear global perspective on what business in this case needs for the digital economy to actually be innovative, to make the investments, to have um, the activities moving forward towards sustainable development. The other point I think is really important is, and I've heard other people say it, is that given the transversal nature of ICT, we talk about the digital economy today, but I think that just like we talk about gender mainstreaming, we're going to find ourselves mainstreaming this topic right through uh, across the economy, across the society to a point where we don't even have this term anymore. But in the meantime, it's really essential that our uh, engagement and our consultation processes do reflect that point that as somebody before me said the expertise really matters it's not just the representation and if you're missing uh, somebody who has the trade understanding implications of uh, data flows and they're not in that discussion on digital economy or conversely if you have someone who has a uh, specific expertise in the technology of the security mechanisms that are needed or someone who's thinking about it from the healthcare perspective or the banking sector then you're missing uh, something in the policy and very often we do see this in a number of forums where um, a lot of the topics be it artificial intelligence blockchain data protection uh, over the top services any of these kind of different topics different areas are looking at them. And so the transversal part is really important. And I heard, uh, I think our German colleague at the beginning talk about trying to work on the linkages between different fora, and I think that's a really important point. I think also um, the notion of uh, interdisciplinary uh, cross-reflection. So as somebody is working on the SME paper, making sure there is a process for the people working on digital economy or trade or banking to be looking across each other. And I know in the B20 process with Argentina, there was a very significant exercise mm -hmm. that was undertaken building on previous years. And, and so I really commend and encourage those um, aspects to, to continue. And I think that there is a, an awareness that the danger of creating consultation tracks for different stakeholders can be a disintegration of the process and I think that what I'm seeing in recent years is is an awareness of that and efforts to make the linkages directly to the G20 um, and I would deeply encourage uh, both G7 and uh, G20 organizers in future to consider how that happens and, and of course those points that were made about the importance of the time and the planning because as we know, there are, there are always more voices than the time we have. So I'm going to pass it back to our organizers and say thank you for including me. Yes, uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, uh, all the comments. And uh, I have to apologize uh, to the uh, participants uh, that uh, we have uh, consumed all the time and the people are waiting outside. So I have to close the session right now. And, uh, uh, we try to be uh, always open, so please uh, contact us directly if you have uh, uh, some questions or comments. And uh, 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 we will uh, commit ourselves to, to utilizing, making the best efforts of the uh, information, uh, learning, finding uh, from this, uh, not only from this session, but all, all the comments and questions from uh, yourself. So please uh, keep in touch and thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, but uh, that, uh, because of my poor management. Uh, we appreciate that you are an 
Thank you so much. Thank you very much for joining. Maybe we can keep in touch. Mm -hmm. I uh, yeah, will uh, give uh, my government uh, the results of mm -hmm. the dream. And maybe someone uh, else uh, would have some other information. Okay. If you need, uh, please uh, call us. <laughs> OK, thank you very much. Yes. So, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm sorry about the message. Uh, no, don't worry. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming and yes, so thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming and I'm sorry about uh, my poor management. No problem. It's very difficult to manage so many different. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a it's a difficulty of a multi stakeholder approach, but anyway, we we it's very good to have a different speakers. I am very sincere. I think it's excellent that you are engaging this conversation and sharing with each other. It's very helpful. Thank you very much. So please stay in touch. Thank you very much. See you soon.